All right, testing. Testing one, two, three. All right, testing. Testing one, two, three. All right, testing. Cool. Can you guys, uh, can you hear me all right? Uh, I'm using a new mic today. Um, hopefully it's not as, uh, it's not going to cut out as much as the mic from yesterday. Um, yeah, so what I'm working on right now is a, uh, a tape that was sent to me. Um, it's a, so, yeah, so part of the problem is uh, the, uh, cool, sweet, you can hear me. Um, the, uh, the tape that I got is a VHS tape um, that was only, well, so the, the VCR that I captured it from is a, it was a mono, it only had a mono out. Um, so what I'm gonna show you today is sort of my process for uh, digitizing, well, I've already digitized it, but basically showing you my process for restoring these tapes. Um, so as you noticed, uh, the audio is only coming out of one channel because it was a mono out on the VCR, so, um, once I start, once I get going in the process, I'm gonna, um, I'm basically gonna duplicate the audio channel and uh, put it on the right as well. That's sort of the best that I can do. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna be stuck out of the out of the uh, the left. Um, we got like 13 people in. Let's see who we got. We got someone from Aleppo. What's up, uh, Angry Andrew, Empathetic Studio? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so interestingly enough, I got. A tape um, um so i got this footage like a couple months ago i think back in january let me look it up um back in january this guy emailed me um sending me this tape this one right here um and he said it was stuff that he filmed it says some of it was stuff that he filmed and other stuff was that he just acquired from friends along the way 
So this tape has um, an all else failed set from Delaware in uh, 90, February of 99. Um, Cave in, Shai Hulud, and Hate Breed from Middlesex County College at the end of February. Um, Ensign, Downset, Snapcase from 99, 97, 96. And he said that there was a Rage Against Machine set from 93, but I think that's a, that's a set that's already been uploaded. Um, so I, I already, so I digitized this tape and it's pretty low quality. I'll, I'll play some of it for you. It's actually, it's borderline unwatchable. At least some of the sets are not that good. Um, but anyway, I, I posted about it that I received this tape and then I got a message on Twitter um, a couple of days later and he said, or someone else messaged me and said that they had footage from the stage of the, the Hate Breed cave show. So theoretically I had two angles for this show, both submitted to me. Um, but one of them is, like I said, borderline unwatchable. And the other one is actually, I think, um, which I'll show you, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's the master recording. It's pretty old. Um, it's not super clear, but it's significantly, significantly clearer than the first tape that I got. So my original plan was to do a multicam edit, but I think um, I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm, I'm going to be forced to just do a single single camera using the, the clean tape that I got. So what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll show you the first tape that I got. Um, I've already converted it. Um, it's this zinc tape. All these files here, if you're looking at my screen, you can see it. Um, I'll play some of it for you just so you can see what I'm talking about. Like, as much as I want to use it, I just don't think it's going to be, um, it's not going to be worth it. Like I said, it's just going to take away from it. Rather than, just u rather than using it for the sake of using it, I think I'd rather opt on the side of keeping the video watchable and using the, just using the, single, the, the better single angle that I have. So I'll, I'll play a couple of these clips for you just so you have a sense of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, when people send me tapes, um, there's always weird shit on the tapes as well. So it looks like um, there was some footage of a, uh, a workout tape, basically, that they filmed off uh, the TV, I guess. Uh, but anyway, like I, like I was saying, a lot of this stuff is just not even watchable. Um, there's a lot of this. Um, so if, you, if you see this like staticky bind, uh, banding at the bottom, that's typically an indicator. From what I understand, at least in my limited experience, that is an indication that this is like a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Um, so this is, I really doubt this is the master recording. And also there's like a lot of just like weird flickering that's going on here. So um, was there footage of Dead to the World? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I'll play some of the beginning of the the good tape that I got, and we can act, we, we'll we'll go through it. We'll see if we actually have it. I'm pretty sure it's just the only three, but um, 
let's figure it out. So again, this, what I just showed you was the, the first tape that I got. So I'm glad I didn't post this because this is just not that great. Um, and uh, so like I said, uh, I had posted that I got this tape and luckily enough, someone else reached out to me saying, hey, I also filmed this show. Um, in an ideal world, um, this, I mean, this is a cool, theoretically cool angle. It's back of the room and it would work very well with the other angle that I got, but you know, unless, unless a better version of this tape surfaces, I'm, I'm just not even going to bother. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll play for you the better tape that I got. So again, this was submitted by someone from Twitter. Ooh. Whoops. Sorry about that. You might get a little, little bit of, um, feedback there. Um, so let me, uh, I'll, I'm going to kill my mic, and we'll I'll play a little bit from this. Um, the running time is about, it's like two hours long, so it, I'm assuming we have, okay, this looks like, this is definitely hate breed. Uh, I guess the lights came on at some point towards the end of the set. Um, just fast forwarding through. There's like another set at the end. I don't know what this is. One, I don't know who this is or when this was or where it was, so this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Um, I'll have to ask the filmer if he recalls who this is. It's funny, like, I'll get tapes from people and they don't know, they won't remember um, what the band was. But let's just go, let's go, we'll watch a little bit from the beginning. And uh, Rob Unison, let me know, Rob Union, my bad. Um, if you recognize your band, just just shout me a holler and we'll, we'll make sure we, uh, we get it.
see the whole beautiful band. We're not an attractive band. No, I'm not. Pretty good. Thanks. Cool. Um, so, Rob, uh, it looks like we there's unfortunately no no footage of your band, which is sad. It's a bummer. Uh, I'm assuming you may have played before Cave In. Um, unless you did play after and for some reason the guy did not film you um, it's a bummer um, maybe my only hope is that if someone sees this footage once it goes up they'll reach out to me and say hey I have another angle um, in which case I will be on the lookout for that um, so what I'm going to do now is um, give me one second um, so this is a two hour long uh, video clip basically because I, I basically popped in the VCR, uh, VHS and just ran the uh, capture program. I didn't, I didn't stop it any, uh, anywhere along the way. So um, basically the first step um, for doing these conversions is, um, is to chop up the file. Uh, basically I want to uh, create um, I, I'm basically going to create separate projects for each of the bands, basically Shai Halud, Hate Breed, and Kaven. Uh, so what I like to do is um, I like to use this program called Virtual Dub. It's free. You can pretty much find it every, anywhere. Um, I think it's like on uh, use. It's somewhere on Google. If someone really wants to know, I'll tell you where to find it. But um, uh, it's it's virtualdub.org. There you go. Um, so what Virtual Dub allows you to do, it allows you to quickly split uh, video files um, without, um, without transcoding it again. So basically you don't have to re-render or re-transfer the video. Uh, it'll basically split it fairly quickly. And you can probably do this with other, with other software, um, like FFmpeg is another application that I use. Um, but I'll, I'll show you how I do it with um, Virtual Dub. So basically you just drop in the the clip um, down here is the uh, timeline. So you can see it's about, uh, it basically shows you the duration both in frames and also in uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So um, what I did was while I was scanning, while I was playing the preview for you guys, I was jotting down when each of the sets began and ended. So um, the cave-in set ends at around the 50 minute mark. So what I like to do is um, basically what you can do is uh, you can go to the beginning of a clip and I uh, I don't know if this is called like a beginning marker 
it's called mark in. So you press mark in, uh, you fast forward to the end point, which again is around the 50 minute mark. Let's see, I wrote down it, it's 50, 13. So we'll back it up a little bit. So right about um, right here is where the cave and set ends. So we're gonna mark out with this other uh, button. So as you can see, it, it selects this region of the video. Um, what you wanna do is um, you have a couple options now. Um, so the, there's a, uh, you have a audio and a video. So a video file has a separate uh, video, uh, audio stream as well. So if you go under video, um, you have a couple options here. Um, since we're basically just trying to extract out the cave inset, um, and we don't want to recompress the video, we wanted we don't want to do anything fancy. We just we want a uh, direct copy of this of this selection. So um, you want to click on direct stream copy for the uh, video, and the uh, audio should by default be direct stream copy. Um, you want to go to uh, save as AVI, and then you're Basically, basically gonna pick where you want to save it. So uh, I have everything under Middlesex, cave in, cave in. And um, so my uh, my naming convention for files is pretty straightforward. I typically name it by um, the last name of the person who submitted the video, followed by the band name, followed by the uh, uh, the date of the set. So in this case, it's a, it's, this is from uh, February 27th, 99. There's, there's no right way or right or wrong way to do it. This is just how I like to do it. If I wanted to, I can incorporate like the venue, but I don't always have that information. So I just try to keep it minimal. Um, and that this is pretty much all I need for record keeping. So we're gonna save that. It's gonna take a couple seconds to run, um, but you can see, uh, says it's gonna take about five minutes to do, which isn't bad. I mean, the other option is to uh, import this video into like Premiere and then um, export the entire uh, clip and that can that might actually take longer to do. So I don't mind waiting five minutes to, to export a 50 minute set. So anyway, while, that, while that's going, um, yeah, pretty much this is it. We've gotta wait. Um, just want to plug a couple things. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I posted uh, a turnstile set today. Uh, this is turnstile from uh, Sound and Fury back in uh, June, June of 2017. So finished editing it this morning and I put it out uh, around uh, 2 p.m. today. So it's a five camera edit. Um, again, this is another video from Chris Avis who passed away. I uh, passed away last July, and I'm finishing his uh, the work that he left behind. So this is one of the sets that he left unfinished. So check that out. Um, it's pretty cool. I guess they're on tour right now. Um, I'm going to try seeing them in, uh, in Philly at the beginning of May. So that should be fun. So this is going... Oh, shit, that was loud. So I've only been to a couple shows at Middlesex County College. Um, I know it was like the spot in the '90s for certain for a certain period of time. There were a lot of shows, a lot of bands that played there. Um, I guess the infamous uh, fires or Earth Crisis yogurt incident happened there, where uh, Sean McCabe from um, uh, Ink and Dagger threw a thing of yogurt at Earth Crisis, and I guess he was wearing a um, like a fur coat and like mayhem ensued. I don't know. Um, anyway, so we're, we've done, uh, we finished uh, making the stream copy of uh, cave -in, So now we're going to do the same thing for uh, Shai Hulud. So Shai Hulud basically starts where the cave -in set ends. So again, at the we're going to set the mark in at the 50 minute mark. Um, their set ends at around 
the hour 15 mark, which is somewhere here. Somewhere getting there. Here we go. So this is the end of the Shai Hulud set and the beginning of Hatebreed. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna mark out. Um, this should still be on direct stream copy. Uh, we're gonna save the AVI under the Shai Hulud folder. Rename it. And let that run. Uh, what's up, Vincent? Uh, I'm assuming you're Vinny M from Twitter that I was just talking to. Um, yeah, I, I, I went to Middlesex for two or three shows in like 2005 to 2007 maybe. Um, but there's so many just like amazing videos from the um, like mid to late 90s from Middlesex County. I think like someone sent me a tape. Um, I want to see if I still have it. I should have it on the site. Um I guess it's not on here. Um, I thought I had a 108 set from Middlesex, but I don't. Um, but yeah, if you're not familiar with, familiar with Middlesex County College, um, go on YouTube, go down memory lane, search for some, uh, I'm trying to see like, what are some like epic sets from Middlesex County? Um, Oh, there's an endpoint show. That's interesting. Um, there's a sheer terror set from 93. Uh, mouthpiece from 96. Uh, there's a 108 show from 07. I was actually at that show. I didn't film it. Um, but that's a fun... That was a 108 in Lifetime. That was a cool show. Um, I'm surprised there's not more. I'm only seeing like a handful of results on, uh, on YouTube, which is kind of a bummer. But I'm sure there's more out there. Um... What's up, Jeremy? Miracle Drug says hi. I hope you guys are well. Um, uh, when Knock Loose came to town, I was talking to those guys backstage, and we were talking about how great Miracle Drug is. So, um, yeah, it's cool to see stuff is still popping in the Midwest. Um, cool. So we finished uh, doing the direct stream on Shai Hulu. So last one is this um, Hate Breed set. Actually, Vinny, if you're still here... Um, there is a, there's another set at the end of the tape and I don't know what it is. Um, again, I'm assuming you're the same Vinny that I was talking to on Twitter, but there's this set, um, at the end, it's right after the hate breed set. And so clearly this is a different show. It's some basement. Um, I'll kill the mic and play a little bit of the audio. If you recognize it, let me know. Um, cause I, I have no idea who this is and when and where it was. And I'd like to figure that out. So I'm going to kill the mic and I'll play a couple seconds of this just so you guys can get a sense of what, or if anyone knows who this band is, let me know. That'd be cool if someone can help me.
All right, well, at the very least, uh, I have a potential date for the show. If you're watching closely, um, this date pops up, which is April 9th, 99. Um, I'm assuming, so what, what ends up happening is when I don't know the date of a show, um, I look for, if there's a clue like this, then I, by default, I assume it's this, and then I try to confirm. I don't always consider this to be 100% correct, but I, at the very least, use this as a starting point. So what I'll do is um, I'll start researching to see if I can find a show from April 9th, 99, uh, somewhere in the New Jersey area that could be it. Um, so hopefully we can figure this one out. Um, I'm assuming, because uh, I think the beginning of this tape yeah, so the beginning of this tape has uh, a date as well, which is February 27th, 99. And that is consistent with the date from the other tape that I got. So I'm assuming, I'm going to conclude that the date on the camera was correct because whenever, whenever I get a tape, it's always 50-50 as to whether or not the date on the camera is correct. But given that the beginning, of the, the beginning date of the first few sets is, is correct, I'm going to assume that this is from April 9th, 99. So... Um, I'm going to make note of that. Hopefully we can, uh, figure this one out. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, that looks like the melody bar. Okay. Um, cool. Um, looks like a basement, but I'll make note of that. So it's possibly the melody bar. Um, probably what I'll do is... I'll probably post a clip, clip of this either on Instagram or on Facebook, and uh, hopefully within a day, someone should recognize it, if not sooner. Oh, it's for the love of. Cool. There you go. Problem solved. Um, which is good, because they're playing uh, This Is Hardcore, and I would like to get uh, footage of them out. I actually have other For the Love Of stuff on, um, I think, from Hellfest 2004, um, that stuff I want to get up to. So this is a, this is a cool find. I, w I actually wasn't expecting to see this at the end of the tape. So that, that's cool. Um, anyway, let's keep going. Um, so the next step is to, uh, again, we're going to crop out the, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. oh, the, um, sorry, we're going to crop out the, Earth Crisis set. Um, so let's see. It ends around here. This is the exciting part about editing. I gotta like sit here. I got a crop video. Let's just crop it here. That's fine. Um, this should be good. Audio video, and we're gonna save as AVI. So while that's running, um, cool. Um, all right, so Vinny, uh, thanks for that. So it it's, looks like it's a, a basement in uh, New Brunswick. So cool. I'm going to add that to my queue, and we'll, we'll get that one out too. Um, I don't know if you saw, but we had uh, someone was tuned in, um, Rob, Rob Union. I don't know if Rob's still watching, but Rob was uh, – Rob was in a band called Dead to the World. He said he actually played the uh, Hate Breed show. And so he, he happened to be on, the, on YouTube Live, and he was asking if there was footage of it of his set. So we watched the first. Uh, we scanned through it. Unfortunately, I only saw Kaven, Shai Hulud, and Hate Breed. So um, unfortunately, I broke the news to him that as of now, there is no footage of his band from the show. But like I said to him... Um, Hopefully, if someone else was filming this um, and they see these videos, they might reach out to me and say, hey, I have another angle. Do you want to put it up? So uh, we'll see. That's, like, the exciting thing about doing these. Like, the more I digitize old tapes, the more I hear from people who are, like, sitting on um, old shit. And they're just like, hey, can you put this up? And I'm, I'm always stoked to put, new st put, pull, put old stuff out there. Um, for me, it's, like... I got into filming bands because I was always into collecting old tapes. And uh, so it's a cool way for me to 
keep doing that um, and also just archiving bands that might not play anymore and you know hopefully helping an, an, the newer generations figure out the um, uh, bands that came before them uh, cool so this is almost done what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create oh shit Nine. All right, so while we're here, let's just uh, we'll crop out their set as well. Cool. So we'll get started once this is done we'll get started on uh, the editing process um, so while that's going um, i've already created uh, a template for uh, the project and Let's see. So typically when I get a tape from uh, a submitted tape, I like to, when possible, I like to credit the original filmers or the, at least the person who submitted the tape. So um, in this case, this was submitted by Vinny M. And uh, by request, Kid with Gloves. So I was asked to credit them as Vinny M and the Kid with Gloves, which is totally cool. Um, interestingly enough, when I was in college, I was known as the Kid with the Bike because I was always, always riding a BMX bike every, everywhere. So I get it. We all had nicknames, and some of us, we still keep them. Um, so we're going to center this, and we're good to go. This was... It's funny. I'm getting a lot of a lot of tapes from February of '99. So I just posted uh, an anti flag and um, the trouble set from February 13th '99 in Boston, uh, and I have a couple more sets coming out from that same night. Um, so it's cool. It seems like a lot of people were filming uh, roughly around the same time in different parts of the country. Middlesex County College and. is in Edison, right? Edison, New Jersey. And so the date was February 27th, 1999. So I'm going to save this. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this template project file into each of these directories. Um, whoops. And I'm going to fix the for the love of because it's uh, like we just noticed it's a different different show. So uh, I'm assuming it's just a basement. Um, so I'm just going to call it. I like whenever I don't know if it's a basement show and I don't know, I typically just use. Um, I use the label. I try to be consistent with my labeling of unknown venues. I just call it basement show. Um, this was in, what do we say, New Brunswick. New Brunswick, New Jersey. And we said this was from uh, April 9th, 1999. So, send of that, and we're good. Close that. 
Um, so I got a question from someone. I'm, I try to stay on top of the questions here. Um, so Ekdesis063 was asking, before Patreon, was I making money? Uh, so no, before I launched the Patreon, I was not making money from 856, um, with one caveat. So I do get some money from YouTube, um, but typically it was, it was just enough to cover my uh, hosting expenses. So um, there's various expenses with running 856. There's uh, hosting fees, there's the website fees. Um, I have to buy hard drives to store all the video. Um, so prior to launching Patreon, uh, I would get some donations from people and all the money that I got from YouTube was going into funding the site. So um, basically I'm trying to do, uh, I got laid off in January. Uh, my full-time job is a software developer, but I got laid off in January and it got to the point where I, I sat, I sat myself down and I said, I've been doing hate five, six for, this is 10 years. Like uh, October it's, it turns 10. And so I said to myself, I kind of just want to do this. Like, I don't want to go back to a nine to five. And so I launched the Patreon. Uh, I'm trying to do this. Uh, I'm basically trying to make a, I'm trying to pay for my bills now. I want to pay for my rent and my electricity and the internet bill and like, you know, have some, something saved over and to like live off of. Um, so I don't know if it's going to work. Um, basically I'm giving it a couple months to see how well um, this experiment goes, but um, ideally this will work out and I can continue, uh, doing what I'm doing at a much, uh, faster rate. So, um, I was telling someone that, um, if I'm able to, if this is, if this, if Patreon is able to be successful, then, um, I'm planning on traveling a lot more to film bands. So if someone hits me up and says, Hey, can you film this, this show in Brazil? I will, I will hop on a flight and go film it. Um, but I'm still a little bit of a ways away from there. I'm at about 20% uh, funded. Um, I'm 20% funded on my goal. If I can get to hundred percent, then I'm going to be much more, I'm going to be in a better position to actually travel places and, uh, shoot shows wherever people want me to go. So, um, fingers crossed. Hopefully I get there. Um, but we'll see. So we're going to start this. We're going to, let's just start with the hate breed set. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the, the video file that we just created. And we're gonna drop it into a sequence here. Um, so one of the first things you'll notice is that, um, so I, I'm typic I typically export videos as 720p. So they're, they're high def videos. So what, the, what's, what we're seeing here is, this was not obviously an HD camera. This is filmed on an old VHS camera. Um, so this was a standard def, not high def resolution, so um, it's it needs to be scaled. In order to fit in this frame, it needs to be uh, resized a little bit. So typically what I do is uh, I bump this up. It's typically around like 230, I think. Yeah, 200. So 223, you're just about fully in the frame. Um, if you look closely, there's still some flickering at the bottom. Um, so I, I typically bump it up, bump up the, uh, scaling just to reduce that. Cause I don't, I'd rather that not show the more of that that shows in the video, the, the more distracting it is. So typically if I bump it up to like 230 or 231, it goes away. So I have it at 232. That's probably good. Um, for, I mean, this is like a 20 year old VHS tape and it's still like decent quality. Um, obviously the show was low light, the lights are off. So the camera is going to have some noise in there. So there's a, there's a limitation on how much we can actually clean, but I'll walk you through what I'm going to do. Um, I guess at some point the lights turned on and it's much clearer, but anyway, um, as I pointed out, the um, it's a mono track. It's a mono. It's a single channel audio uh, because that's how it came out of the VCR. So what I'm going to do is, uh, whoa! Look at his pants. Holy shit! The size of those pants. That's crazy. 
But you would never see that today. I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the the uh, audio track, uh, and I'm going to basically I'm going to duplicate it and then uh, swap the channels. So what that's going to do is it's basically going to take the the left channel, and it's going to mirror it in the right channel. So it's a hack. It's a hacky way of basically getting um, uh, two audio two audio channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kill my mic so you don't get any feedback, but um, I'll play a little bit. Uh, before I do the duplication and after, and you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll hear the difference pretty quickly. Cool. Uh, so hopefully you heard that. Um, basically what I did, like I said, I uh, duplicated the channel and then I uh, under, again, so I'm, I'm editing in Adobe Premiere Creative Cloud 2018, but pretty much any editor should, ha should be able to do this. Um, you basically want to use this uh, swap channel um, and it'll swap the, the, the channel. So what, basically by duplicating and swapping it, you're getting, a, you're mimicking left and right. Um, so what I'm gonna do, um, I can't really clear much. Of, I mean, it's this is probably as clear as the audio is gonna get mostly. Um, what I'll do is I might try to do a little bit of EQ. So you can see there's just a lot of shit happening here on the high end. It's just very crunchy, obviously. Um, So, yeah, what I'll do is I'm going to do a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, and that's basically it. I mean, like I said, there's a, there's a limit on how much can be done with this. Um, another thing that I typically do, I don't think this is interlaced. It might, it, it probably is interlaced, but just to be safe, um, I'm going to de-interlace this footage. So if you go under um, field, Field options, always de interlace, and that should be good. Um, cool. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna narrate over me doing the EQ. I'm just gonna just just gonna do it. Um, so if you want to watch, you can. But if you listen, you might hear uh, what's happening. I'm gonna try to basically, um, I don't know. I'm gonna see if I can clear it up just a little bit more just by bumping up the highs or trying to reduce some of the crunch. But like I said, I don't think I can do a whole hell of a lot with it.
Um, so what I'm trying to do, um, so invariably when I'm working with like an old VHS tape, um, there's going to be a little bit of hiss coming from the tape. Um, it's just typically unavoidable. Um, in this case, there's not a whole lot. Of, I mean, there's a little bit. Um, where is it at? So sometimes you'll see like a spike occurring somewhere around the 10,000 or higher hertz. Um, typically that corresponds to just like a, a, a pitch or a hiss coming from the VCR. So sometimes I need to run some sort of like notch filter, which if you saw, I was, that's what I was trying to mess with. I was trying to see if I wanted to use a notch filter to basically filter out that signal. Um, Another thing that I like to do, which is what I'm playing with now, is using a, a low pass filter. So, uh, so a low pass filter will, will basically set a cutoff for uh, different. Basically, uh, you set a you set a uh, frequency uh, cutoff, and it'll cut off anything that is. Uh, so there's a high pass and a low pass. It'll uh, chop things off accordingly. So sometimes I apply a little bit of a. Uh, a low pass filter just to remove some of the high end hiss, but sometimes, um, sometimes I just leave it because sometimes it just sounds better to have a little bit of that ambient crunchy hiss. Um, in this case, I don't think the hiss, the hit, there's not a significant amount of hiss, so I might just leave it. But let's just keep playing with it.
All right, I think that's probably as much as I'm going to do with the audio. Um, I don't think there's much else I can, can do to recover it. Um, so the only other thing that I'm going to do is just clean up the image a little bit. Um, so there's a couple things that I like to do. I like to adjust the, uh, the RGB curves. So it's the red, green, and blue channels. Um, I like videos that have a little bit of a warmth to them. So I, I typically bump up the... So how this works is I can bump up the reds all the way or, or pull them down. Um, so I'm gonna like bump it up just a little bit. So as you can see, it's just, it adds, um, it adds warmth, but it also, br it makes it a little bit easier to see certain things. Um, I might like, add a little bit of blue just to cool it down slightly. So here's what it looks like uh, before and after. I mean, it's a slight change. Again, this is just, I prefer it. Um, I'm trying to think what else you can do. I'll probably do, apply a little, apply a little bit of sharpening. Um, not too much, but just enough to make out some more of the edges. So and apply this sharpening um, effect. So I'll show you what it looks like as you ramp it up. If you go, if you go too high, let's see. You can't really see it in this video. In certain videos, maybe if I go towards the end, you'll see what I mean. Um, Sometimes if you ramp up the sharpening too high, it gets way too crisp. And then there's a lot of just weird, very weird noise. So I typically don't bump it up to 100. Um, in this case, if you look closely, um, let me zoom in on like Jamie's face. Um, So if you look as I, so here's zero sharpness, but if I bump it up to 100, um, it gets, certain areas get super pixelated and that ends up not looking great. So I might leave it around like 20. So here's like uh, before and after. You might not be able to tell from your screen, but it's sharpening it up just a little bit. And I don't think that's gonna be too Distracting at that point. It adds enough so you can see it a little better. You get a little bit more detail. Um, so I'll probably leave it at that. There's a, I mean, there are, um, there's a lot of plugins out there that you can use to just like enhance old video, but honestly, I don't really bother with them. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I can do. So we could run neat video. Uh, I did pay for this plugin. This is like a hundred dollar plugin. I use it for like wedding, like stuff that I'm getting paid to do, like a wedding video. I'll use it. Then I need to like denoise. Um, let's just we can see what it does. Um, so where did it go? There we go. So I basically dropped in the neat video reduced noise V4. And on the left-hand side, you'll see this uh, setup button. So you click that. It'll take a minute. So what it what Neat Video wants you to do is it wants you to identify a region where. Uh, so basically, what it tries to do, it tries to learn a profile of what the noise looks like. Every every, excuse me, every camera has uh, a certain amount of noise to it. So. If I were to point my camera at like a blank wall with nothing else there, you would still pick up a little bit of noise. And so what Neat Video is trying to do is it says, select a region of the video that is fairly uniform where, you know, for example, it's pointing at a wall and uh, there's not much movement happening. So what it's gonna try to do, it's gonna try to build up a, based off of that stationary shot or based, based off of that like stationary region, it's gonna try to build up a profile of the noise. And so once it knows what the noise looks like for that camera, or under those settings, it can then essentially remove that noise from everywhere else that it occurs in the image. 
that's like a very rough approximation of a just like describing it, but that's kind of how it works. Um, so the difficulty is trying to find a region of noise. Um, so what you can do is you can like select. Gosh, maybe his shirt could be a good way to do it. So you basically want to select a re a region that's big enough, and once you get to like. Once once the box turns green, you know you're you're big enough, because it needs to it needs to see enough noise to understand uh, what to remove. And the the other th oh shit the other thing is you don't want it's important to select a fairly uh, a fairly uh, large and uniform region of text or region of the uh, the screen. Um, so you don't want to be getting like someone's face in their shirt because there's just hot, there's just way too much variability there that's happening. Um, all right, let's see. Yeah, this is going to be tough, but let's, let's try it. Um, most of the set is with the lights off, so maybe it makes sense. Um, here, this might be a good place to do it. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm going to do a profile on this shoulder here. Fairly uniform, so we might be able to pick up a profile. So let's see. Uh, noise filter settings. Cool. So if you look, uh, here's before and after. Uh, before, there's a lot of grain, a lot of noise, um, some weird art artifacts from the tape or the VCR. Um, So here's the original, and here is once we've applied the neat video filter. So it smooth it smoothens the, it removes the noise uh, significantly. Here I'll like push it up a little bit so you can actually see a little bit more. Um, zoom in to like 100%. Drag it down. So uh, this bottom here is before the noise, and this top here is after I remove the or apply the noise reduction. So you can see it, it actually helps. Uh, it does blur the video a little bit, um, but that might not be the end of the world. Because uh, again, we can apply the sharpening to bring back some of that. Um, and there's a lot of parameters here. I don't know if I really want to fuck with a lot of this. Um, I'll leave this there, general. <sighs> I mean, let's, let's apply it. Let's just see what happens. Um, it's probably not going to play back smoothly because it's, you're asking, when you're doing this sort of smoothing, you're asking the uh, processor to, to do a lot of work. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to play back, but let's just try it. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, it does smoothen it out, but it might actually make it a little bit more enjoyable to watch. So here's before. Um, so you're, you are getting a lot of, like, God damn, look at those pants. I can't get over these pants. Um, so there's, a, there's still, so this is without, again, without any noise reduction. Zoom in. So you are getting detail in like the hat and like the shoe, but it's at the it's at the expense of a lot of this just weird artifacts. So this is before we apply 
the neat video noise filter here is after. So it smoothens it out, like I said, and that's probably, it's probably better that we do that. We can bump up the, um, the sharpening. So let's just see what happens. I'm trying to find a, another good spot to check this. So if we, yeah, I mean, look at that. This is before, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is before we apply neat video and this is after. So, I don't know, some people might prefer the original, but I think for the hell of it, I mean, I might, might just go with the, the cleaned up version. Um, so what we can then do, like I was saying, is we can uh, maybe bump up the sharp, before I had the sharpening at 25, we can probably bump it up a little bit more to recover some more of that detail. So here's at, here's it at 50. Um, zoom back out. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with that. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is done. Um, what I'm gonna do now is basically wrap up the, do the final couple steps, um, which is adding in the, uh, the band logo and fading the video in and out. All right. So I have, pulling up an old logo that I have, um, Huh. Ugh, I keep yawning, I don't know why. So I, I don't remember, last time I had a Hapri video, I don't remember what color the logo was. I'm actually gonna check right now, I'm curious. Oh, okay, I actually had it red. Um, so this is a logo from a Okay, this is um, a 2014 hate breed from a 2014 hate breed set that I filmed. Um, I'm just going to replace the black with a red. Um, and then we should be good to go. I think that'll look better on the video than actually doing the uh, giving it black. Um, anyway, so I'm going to save this logo in this directory. Blah, 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 blah. Middlesex, keep read, keep read .psd. Go back to here. And then we're going to import the logo. Isn't this exciting? This is what it's like to edit videos. You just sit here and do this stuff. It sounds like I'm, I mean, I, I like this. Don't get me wrong. But I think, I think people expect this to be super sexy and it's just, this is what it takes to, to produce videos. The uh, neat, neat video, like I said, it's super intensive. So it, it makes it very difficult to preview video. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna disable it for now. I'm gonna add in the fade ins, basically crop, up, crop the video from the beginning and the end where I want it to begin to fade in and fade out. And then once I have it ready, I'm gonna re-enable the, the neat video plugin and then I'll set it to export. And then we'll be good to go.
Cool. Um, one thing I want to point out. So, uh, Ro- I don't know if Rob is still watching, um, but this is pretty interesting. Um, there's someone back here holding a video camera. So, there's at least another angle out there. I don't know who this person is. Uh, I don't know if he filmed everyone or just hate breed, but someone somewhere is sitting on uh, more footage from the show. So that's another thing I love about doing this archival work is that I always, I don't always, but sometimes I find someone else who's filming and I always wonder who that person is and whether or not that footage surfaces. surfaces. So cool. We at least know that there might be more out there. Um, That's it. This is kind of the process for doing these restorations. Sometimes it's a little bit more involved. Sometimes, like I said, I do much more with the cleaning the audio or cleaning the video. But in this case, um, it was pretty limited what I could do, um, at least in terms of cleaning up the audio. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results that we're seeing from Neat Video. So I think we're, we're good to go. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because there were other... Uh, the two other sets that from the same show. Uh, and rather than going through this entire process again, I'm going to uh, save these settings. Uh, basically, the curves adjustment, the, um, the noise profile, the sharpening, the parametric EQ, the low-pass filter, and the, compressor, the compression. I'm going to save it as a preset. Um, I'm going to call it uh, Middlesex from 990227. And so when I work on the other videos from the show, I'm basically just gonna drop the clips in, apply these same exact settings, and it's more or less gonna be ready to go. Um, so that's it. Um, I'm probably gonna get off the stream. I don't think, uh, if you watch one of these, you, you get the idea. There's no, really no reason to watch the other ones, uh, at least from this show. I'll, I'll do more of these streams when I have more interesting or other interesting, more complicated uh, tasks to clean up. Oh, look, there's someone else filming too. This guy's definitely holding a video camera. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, sorry, I was reading a message. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have questions, feel free to message me. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. Um, If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Uh, I'm going to be doing these YouTube streams pretty frequently, so it's a way to give you a behind-the-scenes look of what's coming up. Uh, It's a way to show you how I approach these problems. And uh, also, like, if people have feedback for me, um, I'm definitely open to what people have to say in terms of making the videos better or... If someone's a more experienced editor and they have tips for making these uh, videos clearer, like, please let me know. Um, anyway, thanks again. I will catch you guys soon.